friends good evening and a warm welcome to this time of worship let us bow our heads in prayer our most merciful and gracious god our creator and our sustainer we bow before you in humble gratitude for the gift of life and for all the bounteous blessings and varied experiences that reveal your steadfast love towards us and this evening as we have gathered together to worship you and adore you to lift up your holy name recognizing that you are the lord of life the king of kings and the lord of lords may this worship service be acceptable to you and enable us o oh god to experience your presence listen to your still small voice and order our lives so that we would always bring glory and honor to your name this we ask in the name of jesus christ our lord amen as we begin the worship service shall we all stand and sing to the glory of god hymn number 91 all hail the power of jesus name hymn number 91 
as we remain standing let's follow the order of holy eucharist before that let's read the our lord summary of the law and the prophets let's pray almighty god unto whom all hearts be open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the holy spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through christ our lord amen let's say together glory to god in the highest and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased we praise thee we bless thee we worship thee we glorify thee we give thanks to thee for thy great glory o lord god heavenly king god the father almighty o lord the only begotten son jesus christ o lord god lamb of god son of the father that takest away the sin of the world have mercy upon us thou that takest away the sin of the world receive our prayer thou that sittest at the right hand of god the father have mercy upon us for thou only art holy thou only art lord thou only art most high O Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's turn to page number 490. Our Lord's summary of the law and the prophets. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than this and these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets god have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law dearly beloved we have come together to hear god's most and to receive the body and blood of the lord Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence seeking God's grace that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith Ye that do truly and honestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways make your humble confession to almighty God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our lord jesus christ let us all confess our sins together heavenly father we confess that we have sinned against thee and our neighbor we have walked in darkness rather than in light we have named the name of christ but have not departed from iniquity have mercy upon us we beseech thee for the sake of jesus christ forgive us all our sins cleanse us by thy holy spirit quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others that we may henceforth serve thee in newness of life to the glory of thy holy name amen hear the gracious word of god to all who truly turn to him through jesus christ come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i'll give you rest god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life faithful is the saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners if any man sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen thanks be to god please be seated the ministry of the word of god Now the scripture portions appointed for this day will be read to us.
the scripture portion is taken from zechariah chapter 9 verse 1 to 12 zechariah chapter 9 verse 1 to 12 the burden of the word of the lord in the land of hadrach and damascus shall be the rest thereof when the eyes of man as of all the tribes of israel shall be toward the lord and hamath also shall border thereby tyrus and zidon though it be very wise and tyrus did build herself a strong hold and heaped up silver as a dust and fine gold as the mire of the streets behold the lord will cast her out and he will smite her power in the sea and she shall be devoured with fire ashkelon shall see it and fear gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful and ekron for her expectation shall be ashamed and the king shall perish from gaza and ashkelon shall not be inhabited and a bastard sh- shall dwell in ashdod and i will cut off the pride of the philistines and i will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth and he that remaineth even he shall be for our god and he shall be as a governor in juda and ekron as a jebusite and i will encamp about mine house because of the army because of him that passeth by and because of him that returneth and no oppressor shall pass through them any more for now have i seen with mine eyes rejoice greatly o daughter of zion shout o daughter of jerusalem behold thy kin cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt and the fall of an ass and i will cut off the chariot from ephraim and the horse from jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and the and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant i have sent for the thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water turn you to the strong hold ye prisoners of hope even to day do i declare that i will render double unto thee may lord god add his blessing to the reading of the scriptures theme for our meditation is christ the king of peace today's responsive reading is from psalm 24 psalm 24 the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he has founded upon the seas and has established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that clean hands and a pure heart has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn to serve he shall receive the blessings from the lord and the righteousness from the god of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him yes Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, Lord mighty in the world. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory, the Lord of hosts? is the king of glory salam glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning and now and it shall be what is the turn amen
Today's epistle lesson is taken from Ephesians, second chapter, 11 to 22nd. Ephesians, second chapter, 11 verses to 22nd verses. Wherefore, remember that ye being in the time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God. Here ends the epistle portion. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. The theme assigned is Christ the King of Peace. And the part of the meditation on this theme, the gospel portion, is chosen St. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. St. Mark chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 1. Kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And here ends the reading of the gospel portion. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of this holy word. Thank you. Let us all once again praise God by singing hymn number 516. Hymn number 516, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. After the singing of the hymn, our presbyter in charge, Reverend K. James Cecil Victor Aigaru, will share the word of God with us today. Glory that's on our way. 
this blessed evening we thank you god for the opportunity to come into your holy presence to worship you and adore you to be strengthened by your word and the sacrament at this time as we reflect on your word we commit ourselves into your hands fill us with your holy spirit and grant us your guidance so that we may understand your word and live accordingly in jesus name i pray amen please be seated mark's gospel chapter 11 was 9 and 10 those who went ahead and those who followed shouted hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Dearly beloved greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is a very special day in the life 
of the church. Because today, we commemorate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We remember Jesus being acclaimed as king, accepted as king, and hailed as the king of kings. This Sunday is observed as Palm Sunday. As the tradition goes, because Jesus was welcomed and praised, waving the palm branches, so this particular Sunday is observed as Palm Sunday. There is nothing great in the palms, though. The palms stood as a symbol for peace. But today as we celebrate Palm Sunday, our focus is more on Christ the King. And the theme assigned for our meditation today is Christ the King of Peace. Christ the King of Peace. I would like to read two passages from the Bible. One is from the book of the Psalms, Psalm number 24. A small portion from the responsive reading that we had this evening. Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The next passage is from the book of Zechariah, the Old Testament reading. Chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and sa having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Based on these scripture portions, I would like to talk about the significance of the prophecy. Next, the king himself. And then, the significance of the day, the triumphal entry. If we look at the prophecy, we understand God's love towards the chosen. It's not just about the people of Israel, but it is all about you and me. The Bible says, we are a called out community. We are chosen by God to be his disciples, to bear witness to him, and to radiate God's love in and through our lives. We are chosen. That is the primary belief of every Christian that I am chosen despite who am I. I am a sinner. I am a wretched person. But yet, God has chosen me. That belief enables us to follow Christ faithfully. 
to believe that the words recorded in the scriptures are for me not for someone else so with this premise let us understand the prophecy first the prophecy was a If you turn with me to the book of Zechariah chapter 9 the very title of the chapter is judgment on Israel's enemies God judges your enemy and that is why God says I will avenge you don't worry leave it to me you don't be judgmental you do not judge you do not avenge your enemy all that you have to do is to love them and pray for them as a believer but god says i will judge your enemies and that is what god has done to the enemies of israelites these enemies that are recorded here were not ordinary enemies if you go by the names you would understand damascus hadrak hamat tyre sidon philistines gaza and so on all these nations were very very powerful for each nation there is a beautiful description about who they were and what they were if you go by if you understand what is recorded here it is written about syrians as a very powerful nation wealthy mighty in army but the bible says the word of the lord will come upon them and that word will be a burden upon them if you look at tyre and sidon they had lot of wisdom wealth and strength they found security in their own wisdom wealth and strength but when you read the scriptures god says you know you will understand how wealthy they were i want to turn your attention to verse 3 which says tyre has built herself a strong hold she has heaped up silver like dust and gold like the dirt of the streets imagine the silver and gold they had so much in plenty that it was just like dust you know that means they were very very wealthy and therefore they were proud but god says i will take away your pride and i will bring you bring shame upon you because you have not learned to rely on the creator but you are relying on the created things the moment we begin to rely on the created things than the creator that's when we experience the fury of god when it comes to philistines they were a great city with many great warriors but god says your government shall be dissolved 
the king shall perish and not only that there will not be any successor see how harsh god's judgment and punishment can be they were very strong fortified wealthy but god says i will bring everything to naught the secondly second the prophecy was about the righteous king the messiah and his coming with a description about himself how he would come as a humble king riding on a donkey then there is a prophecy about the victory that god would grant to his people the success and the deliverance and fourth there is a promise of great plenty joy and honor to the people of israel for their love and devotion toward god so this is all about book of zechariah and the prophecy judgment upon the enemy though they were powerful and love and compassion toward the people of israel the chosen and the humble now we move towards the king today is all about the king normally we when we tell stories to our children either it is about a king or about the jungle they like the stories about king and the jungle isn't it we begin to say once upon a time so today we retell the story that took place once upon a time the king entering into jerusalem zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 and isaiah chapter 62 verse 11 say say to the daughter of zion see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey so generally the king comes to rule no doubt about it king has to rule but here is a king who came to serve so jesus was and is a different kind of a king and the following verses also indicate to this fact most of the kings are pride about their office about their position about what they have they take pride in their army but here comes a king completely disarming himself in humility kings of the world believe in the strength and power of the army but here comes a king who completely disarms himself in humility because he doesn't require any external power and he himself is power being god himself and the son of god he comes in utter humility if we look at jesus's life and ministry it was always distinct while the leaders look for publicity jesus always ran away from publicity whenever he felt that he was gaining more popularity he escaped from that place he went into solitude to spend time in prayer 
he never looked for pomp and show or popularity like the rulers of this world a very very distinct and unique king because he knew the purpose for which he was sent and that king entered jerusalem today and we know it was not an ordinary entry but a triumphant entry so why do we call it a triumphant entry has he defeated anyone we shall look at the scriptures the triumphant entry of jesus was the plan of god because it set a stage for jesus's climax jesus's life and ministry comes to an end once he entered jerusalem and from henceforth the passion begins the arrest of jesus the trials the crucifixion and so on so the stage was set for the climax in jesus' life and prior to that jesus triumphantly he was a king who was hailed and worshiped that's what we read in luke's gospel chapter 19 verses 37 to 40 as he was drawing near already on the way down the mount of olives the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise god with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen why were they hailing and worshiping christ because of what christ has done because of what they have seen with their eyes because of what they have experienced in their own lives they began to praise and worship god but you know the next verse says the pharisees became jealous they said to jesus why don't you stop them from praising you hailing you as hosanna as the messiah as the king stop them from shouting hosannas and then jesus says i tell you if these were silent the very stones would cry out if you are silent the stones would cry out it was predestined that jesus should be acknowledged and acclaimed as the king of kings and lord of lords and therefore it was a triumphant entry he was a distinct king as i said he was a king hailed and worshiped not only that he was a king who wept can you imagine a king weeping it doesn't happen even if they want to weep they will go to the closet and weep a king should always showcase bravery power but never fear or anxiety here was a king who wept but why did he weep we read in the scriptures matthew 
chapter 23, verse 37. He stopped and wept for Jerusalem. He said, O Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. By looking at the condition of Jerusalem, Jesus wept. What a compassionate king is he. He is king, not supposed to weep. But when he looks at our life situation, he weeps over us with an intention to bring us back to himself. Jesus says, I long to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks. God is compared with hen and we with chicks. Sheep and shepherd, hen and chicks, potter and the clay, all these are imageries which connect us with God, our creator and our redeemer. They only help us to understand how God loves us, tends us, protects us and shapes our life. King, yet he wept. A very compassionate king. He is a king who is not interested in warfare but in peace. Zechariah chapter 9 verses 10 to 12 I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. King, who is not interested in warfare, in bloodshed, but in peace. He said, the Bible says, he speaks peace to the nations. And this king shall restore hope to you. He will deliver you from the waterless pit. What a powerful statement it is. Today as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we are reminded that Jesus the Christ, the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace, is interested in restoring our life. When we read the verse that he will free us from the waterless pit, you know, Joseph should come to our mind. He was thrown into a waterless pit by his brothers. He could have perished there, but God brought him out from the pit. So someone titled Joseph's life as from pit to the palace. When we trust God, the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace, 
he can deliver you from the waterless pit and he can establish your life upon the solid rock from hopelessness he will lead you into a life filled with hope god is interested in delivering you and me when we read ephesians chapter 2 paul reminds us that he is also interested to reconcile you and me with god and with one another i want to draw your attention to some of the key words here so that we understand how our lives would be without the king of kings and the prince of peace formerly you were gentiles uncircumcised separated from christ excluded from citizenship in israel and foreigners to the covenant and foreigners to the promises of god without hope without god you know and far away from god but now having been reconciled by christ you have a unique identity of your own you are not a gentile but a believer and circumcision has nothing to do with your faith but all that you need to do is to rent your heart and invite christ to be the ruler of your life you are no longer separated no longer excluded but now you are included you become part of the household of god we call it oikomene which means the household of god everyone who believes in christ is included in that household is part of that household no distinction if you look at some of the images or paintings that are drawn today keeping this broader theme household of god in mind you will find children young and the old disabled and the environment all around you can google and see any picture or painting pertaining to the household of god you will find all the excluded as being included during the times of jesus or until the time of jesus children had no value but jesus said unless you become like these children you cannot enter into god's kingdom henceforth children found place in the community in the household of god in the house of god the disabled were most often excluded but now they are included so nothing can separate us from the love of god that's what paul says in romans chapter 8 neither the powers nor the principalities neither the angels nor death can separate us from the love of christ you are not excluded but you are included god is interested in restoring us in reconciling us so that dearly beloved the very plan of god the purposes of god would fulfill in our lives what is that plan of god what is that purpose of god that we should continue to bear the image of god but we mar the image of god by our own misdeeds we mar the image of god 
in order to restore that image christ came into this world he died on the cross so that all those who come to this cross receive the savior of the world as their personal savior they are restored back they are reconciled to have a new identity in christ the prince of peace the king of peace offers peace to all of us this peace which the world cannot give christ says my peace i give to you a peace i give to you my peace i give to you which the world cannot give this peace called shalom is all inclusive all that you need for your sustenance for your progress for your joy for your salvation everything is included in this peace christ entered jerusalem with a specific purpose that was a stage set for his climax but that was not the end of his ministry he has handed over the ministry of restoration and reconciliation to us the church of god the body of christ so today it is our responsibility to realize our calling and to make efforts to see that people are restored back to god and there is reconciliation among individuals within the families and in the church so that god's presence is felt and experienced someone said where there is peace there is god where there is peace there is god let us bow our heads in prayer gracious god our heavenly father we thank you and praise you for speaking to us this evening though we are unworthy and have gone astray you have come into this world to seek and save us today we are found we are restored and we are reconciled by the king of kings we are never alone we are never weak because we belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords help us o oh god to go into this world with this great confidence that we belong to you and we are already restored help us to fulfill the responsibilities that you <coughs> and trust to us so that wherever we work and wherever we live we continue to live as those who belong to you grant us your peace and joy which the world cannot give in jesus name i pray amen on behalf of the past committee members and the entire congregation i would like to thank our president in charge reverend k james sil victor aigaru for sharing with us the word of god aigaru thank you so much let us all affirm our faith by saying the nicene creed that is found on page 493 page 493 let us all stand and affirm our faith by saying the nicene creed that is found on page 493 I believe in one God the Father almighty maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God begotten of his father before all worlds God of God 
light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and of salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under pointless Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spake by the prophets and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come Amen Request the congregation to please be seated. Now let us listen to the church announcements. Good evening church. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please make note of the announcements. The details of the last Sunday offerings were as follows. In the 6 a.m. Holy Communion service, it was 24,460 rupees. In the 7.30 a.m. Tamil service, it was 32,470 rupees. In the 9.30 a.m. Telugu service, it was 119,710 rupees. In the 6.30 p.m. English service, it was 114,260 rupees. The offeratory collected on a Friday service was 32,680 rupees. And the monthly subscriptions collected was 20,550 rupees, total accounting to 3,44,130 rupees. The theme for meditation for the next Sunday, that is Easter, Resurrection, Celebrating Life in Jesus. The preachers for the next Sunday appointed as follows. The 5 a.m. sunrise service, Reverend Dr. A. B. Joseph Kisho. In the 7.30 a.m. Tamil service, Reverend M. Jos Kumar. And in the 9.30 a.m. Telugu service, the Right Reverend J. S. Kanka Prasad, former Bishop Medak Diocese. And in the 6.30 p.m. English service, Reverend K. James Cecil Victor. Please make note of the special announcements. There will be no women's fellowship during Lent. It will be resumed after Easter, that is from 13th April 2023, no Sunday school on 2nd and 9th April and it will resume on 16th April 2023. Holy Week services will be held on 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th of April, Monday to Thursday, the Thursday being Monday Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in our church. Holy Week services are as follows, Monday the 3rd April, the leader will be Mr. Met to Albert Prakash Rao. The speaker will be Reverend D. John, uh, John Janathan. The theme, Amsham, Anjurapu Chetanu Shapinchuta. And on Tuesday, 4th April, the leader will be Mrs. N. Jayaprabha Samsundar. And the speaker will be Reverend B. Deva Sahayam. Theme, Amsham, Prashnalu Mariyu Javabulu. On the Wednesday, on the 5th April, the leader will be Mrs. K. Suhasane Sisil and the speaker will be Reverend Salomi Shadrak Amsham, Esuni Abhishek Inchita. This will be conducted by Women's Fellowship and on Monday, Thursday, that is on 6th April, the leader will be, leader and speaker will be Reverend K. James Sisil Victor, Amshamu, Kristu Jeevamichu Aharam. And the short film Nirnayam will be telecasted after Monday Thursday service uh, brought out by the socio-economic team. Good Friday service will be held from 10.30 a.m. onwards till 3 p.m. Donations are requested from the congregation for the Good Friday Fellowship Lunch in cash or kind. Please contact Property Secretary Mr. Sudhir Johnson. 
Easter eggs will be distributed during Easter morning services. Eggs are sponsored by Mr. Amidipuram Anil. And there will be Run for Jesus, that is on Saturday, 8th April, starting from church at 6 a.m. And the run ends at St. George's Grammar School. Interested participants can contact Youth Secretary, Mr. Pintu Madhila. On silent Saturday, the 8th April, we will have Akanda Patam, reading one gospel by dividing the passages. The Akanda Patam will begin from 7 a.m. on Saturday, that is on 8th April. Thank you. And there will be a wedding band. Marriage is announced between Mr. Madhila Moses Manohar Avinash, son of Dr. M. L. Kantaya, who is a member of CSI Wesley Church Clock Tower, with Kumari Shanti Dulla, daughter of Mr. Dulla Samuel Naidu, who is a member of Beraka Prayer House. This is second man's. If any of the congregation has any objection, to the above said bands, you may do so in writing to our presbyter in charge. Thank you. Friends, um, I would like to first of all thank God for enabling us to complete the painting and uh, renovation work of our church. If we talk about renovation, it started almost a year ago. In the month of June or July, we started with our roof. And then now we have completed the interior as well. I would like to thank Mr. V. R. David and Nirmal Raj of uh, Tamil Congregation and Mr. Pagi Emmanuel Prem Kumar our member and the pastorate committee member for coming forward to not only contribute for these works but also for personally monitoring the entire work it was a very very tedious work you know they have spent a lot of time in supervising the work and ensuring that everything uh, took place in a way that we wanted and in the uh, scheduled time. Last night when I returned from cottage prayer meeting at about 10.30, still the works were underway. There were still a lot of, uh, uh, you know, scaffoldings here on the altar and still the detailing work was happening on this um, stained glass area um, and some fans were still being fit and there were material all over, the benches were still outside but in the morning when we came, everything was in place and the worship place was set for all of us to come together and worship. So I would like to thank all those who toiled and worked hard to see that we have this beautiful sanctuary to worship God. Last Sunday, I announced that we will all have worship services from today. There were lots of doubts, but God has made it possible. So I would like to thank uh, these donors and also for their supervision, and particularly our property secretary, Mr. Sudhir Johnson, and our office bearers, who constantly gave their suggestions and took timely decisions to see that several things have been attended to in order that we will have uh, many uh, repairs and renovation works uh, have been done. You see the pigeon mesh uh, being uh, installed and the chandelier being uh, repaired and um, uh, renovated and the reading lecterns are uh, polished and uh, they are brought to the original shape. So lots of things have been happening uh, for the past two weeks or more. So I would like to really thank and praise God for God's protection to all those who have worked. Imagine working in this uh, heights. Um, it was a very risky job, but God has really protected all the workers 
and they have worked very diligently from morning 8 till night 10.30 they were working every day. So we pray that God would bless them abundantly. And I also would like to personally thank the pastorate committee members for their support and all of you as congregation members for you had to bear with the inconveniences for almost a month. This was a very important season, Lenten season, but the services had to be held in the parish hall and also in the front yard of the church. And we also had inconveniences due to rain, but all of you uh, were very patient and extended your kind cooperation. Therefore, I would like to thank all of you. I would like to thank the office, our church staff, for making necessary arrangements throughout this month. Whenever we shifted our services one place to the other, they had to really arrange everything, the PA system, the live streaming, and lighting, and all that. So I would like to thank Mr. Satyanandam, our Anand, and uh, Mr. Stanley, who helps us with live streaming and PA system for making all the necessary arrangements. Uh, today, for the morning services, um, Mr. Madhu from Machel had provided palms, so I would like to place on record our sincere thanks to him. And morning, we had a beautiful procession uh, by the entire congregation, and mainly helped by our youth and bhajana team, you know, um, wearing the costumes of Jesus and the 12 disciples. It was a very good show of showing to the world how Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly and also was praised and adored. So I would like to thank all of you for your kind cooperation and I pray that I request you to continue to pray for the church and the programs that would take place in the ensuing week. From tomorrow onwards, we have prayer meetings and the Lenten services every day. So pray for the preachers, pray for the leaders who lead and conduct the worship service that we would have a very meaningful and a blessed time. Uh, there are some small things to be attended. Uh, so I believe that all those things would be set in a couple of days. And I once again thank um, all the uh, donors and particularly Mr. Pagi Emmanuel Prem Kumar for his personal involvement and supervision in ensuring, ensuring that everything took place and, uh, uh, you know, in time. Thank you. God bless you. Let us all once again praise God by singing hymn number 1028, hymn number 1028, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. As we sing this hymn, our offering tree shall be collected.
please make a note of the special authorities that we have received. Tithe offerings from Mrs. and Mr. Karkala Roberts, Indrakant and family, from TPA Prem Kumar and family, from Togaru Kevin Paul, general thank offering from Asoda Shifra Alina, and general thank offering from Srimati and Sri T. Samson Dhanand and family. Let us all pray for the general offertory and also for the special offertory that we have received. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has not spared thine own Son, but delivered him up for us all, and who with him has freely given us all things, receive these offerings which we bring and dedicate to thee, and enable us with all our gifts, so to yield ourselves to thee, that with body, soul, and spirit, we may truly and freely serve thee, and in thy service find our deepest joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. As we all remain standing, let us all prepare ourselves for the breaking of the bread by singing hymn number 351. Hymn number 351, I hear thy welcome voice. Standing, let us follow the order of service for the breaking of the bread. Page number 499. Behold how good and joyful a thing it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. We who are many are one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread. I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness, I will sing and speak praises unto the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. Say shalom to one another and pass on the peace of Christ. Shalom. shalom. Having been reconciled with God and with one another, let us say together, be present, be present, O Jesus, thou good high priest, as thou wast in the midst of thy disciples, and make thyself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. Meet and write so to it is verily meet, right, and our bounden duty. That we, uh, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, through whom thou didst create the heavens and the earth and all that in them is, and didst make human beings in thine own image, and when they had fallen into sin, didst redeem them to be the first fruits of a new creation. Therefore, with angels and archangels, 
and with all the company of heaven we lord and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of thy glory glory be to thee o lord most high blessed be he that hath come and is to come in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you may kindly be seated truly holy truly blessed art thou o heavenly father who of thy tender love towards mankind did give thine only son jesus christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me <coughs> likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me amen thy death o lord we commemorate thy resurrection we confess and thy second coming we await glory be to thee o christ we most humbly beseech thee o merciful father to sanctify with thy holy spirit us and these thine own gifts of bread and wine that the bread which we break may be communion of the body of christ and the cup which we bless the communion of the blood of christ grant that being joined together in him we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things unto him who is the head even christ of the lord by whom and with whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be unto thee o father almighty world without end as our savior christ hath commanded and taught us we are bold to say our father what in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen as we prepare ourselves to approach the table of the lord let us examine ourselves and say together the prayer of humble access we do not presume to come to this thy table o merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table but thou art the same lord whose property is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of thy dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us amen the bread which we break is it not a communion in the body of christ the cup which we bless is it not a communion in the life bread of christ
draw near with faith and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ he gave for you. Remember that he died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, let us give thanks. Shall we all stand? Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has accepted us as thy children in thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and has fed us with the spiritual food of his most precious body and blood, giving us the forgiveness of our sins and promises of everlasting life, we thank and praise thee for these inestimable benefits, and we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. Grant us grace not to be confirmed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may learn what is thy good and perfect will, and so obey thee here on earth, that we may at the last rejoice with all thy saints in thy heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. In closing, let us sing hymn number 84. As a recessional song, let us sing hymn number 84. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King. with you. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.